Right then. And now with sound. <laughs> Damn it. I thought I'd unmuted myself, but apparently not. Hello! Welcome to the chain, our series where one episode links to another by some means, whether that is the director, a composer, an actor, a word in the title, it could be anything. And as we've proved in the series, it really could be anything. Uh, last week, we had a look at Jerry Goldsmith's iconic score from Chinatown. Uh, this week, linking via the actor Bruce Glover, who played Mr. Wint in this movie, we're looking at uh, John Barry's score from Diamonds Are Forever, which I believe is the seventh Bond film official in that official Eon Productions uh, series. Um, uh, yeah, thanks guys who uh, pointed out that I was muted. Yeah, that could have been... Well, it was embarrassing, but it could have been even more so. So thank you for saying. Um, if you are here live, please say hello in the chat. It's nice to know I'm not just talking to myself, especially when I'm muted. Um, and uh, if you're not, then um, why not? No, not why not. But thank you very much for watching, even though not live. Um, I had a look earlier at um, some stats, and just to do the usual YouTube admin thing, I don't do it very often, but um, more than 50% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribed to the channel. So when I leave it extremely late to set up a live stream like this one, uh, which I only set up 15 minutes before the stream, um, you won't get notified and reminded that uh, I am actually going live. So do subscribe and you'll get a nice notification saying Chris has gone live and you really want to come and watch this because we're doing an awesome score. Anyway, admin over. As usual, I've made myself a template. Ta-da! And uh, we're going to crack on. We're going to do the main theme. Um, this is actually as orchestrated by uh, Nick Rain for the John Barry tribute concert that happened in the early 2000s. Um, so not 100% original Barry orchestration, um, but just about as close as we can get right now. Um, why are we having a look at this score? If you weren't here and you haven't seen the last few episodes, um, I took a request. Um, somebody said that they um, particularly wanted me to have a look at Tara's theme from Gone with the Wind, and this was about uh, two or three weeks ago now. So I looked to see um, if it was possible to make links from where we were at that point in the chain, and uh, I could see that actually in four steps we could get there. So this is step number two, three. I think, uh, in that route to Gone with the Wind. Um, so next week um, we're going to be having a look at the 1933 Max Steiner score from King Kong and uh, then we'll be able to link via Max Steiner directly to Gone with the Wind, which is good fun. Um, I've had another request um, after that which um, we're going to go on to, um, which is quite fun, and I've managed to do that in four steps as well. So uh, we've got some really good fun scores coming up in the coming weeks. So as I said, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Right, enough waffle. Let's bring up manuscript and crack on, shall we? <coughs> if you... Um, were tuned in in the run-up um, to this going to me coming on and going live. You'd have heard a cue that was um, when uh, Mr. Wint and Mr. What's the other character's name? I forget now. Mr. Kid um, try to assassinate Bond and end up dying themselves. Spoilers. Um, but it's got that nice, sultry version of the Diamonds Are Forever theme because it's actually having a date on a super yacht. 
um, having a meal. And um, this score is actually quite good. It's um, very diverse in its styles um, because you go to Las Vegas and then Holland. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just, it's got lots of different styles within this um, score. So it's quite a good one. I said enough waffle and then I've carried on waffling, so sorry. Um, let's go. Are we transposing? Yes, we are. Good. that uh, accidental in there with the key signature and because this is a later arrangement it's actually got key signatures in so I'm going to keep them in for now and then as per most film scores I'll actually take them out at the end so we get all the accidentals in um, Just to show that it's an upward sweep on the mark tree. Um, de -de -de -de. Can't control that, unfortunately, in Note Performer. You get what you're given. It's a nice clear manuscript, so I'm going to try and crack on through it as much as I can. Um, it's quite a few pages to try and do in one two hour session, but we'll get as far as we can. Interesting. 
well. Hmm. Okay. Don't really like the way that's written. Um, what we've got written in the manuscript is an octave up. Let's just give ourselves a bit more space here. Um, and then both. Hi, Philip. How are you doing? Oh, and hi, Charlie, as well. And Andrew and Thomas. Sorry if I didn't say hello earlier. I was muted like a wally. Um, yeah, what I was saying I don't like too much about this is um, these are marked as both harmonics with the octave up line. Um, in fact, that would probably have to be done um, on voice two to work. So we do lower bottom note like that. There we go, and then you get the harmonic. Um, I don't think that will play back the way that um, that's intended. Hi, Pete. Oh, we're looking busy tonight. Uh, yeah. So if you hear that, you can't. You can't hear two pictures. Um, what that needs to be, I think, is um, let's take that off. <coughs> so to get each of those up the octave. You do a touch harmonic on the fourth. Um, so we put in a fourth above with the diamond. Oops, so that's note head number two, like that. That's a lot easier for a violinist to read that instantly know, okay, I'm fingering the C and I'm touching the fourth. That's going to produce the note that we actually want rather than just showing pitches with an octave up line and a circle harmonic. There's no debating how to play this the way it's shown now. So hopefully you can now hear two notes. So playback works properly when you actually write it out in the, what I think is the better, more prescriptive way. No, it wouldn't make sense to use a bracket, but I I will write Divisi in a minute. Um, that's not technically playable on my violin. You would need two hands just to finger it. Because you actually you're touching with your first finger on the you know, normally written note, and then you're using your fourth finger to uh, lightly touch a fourth above, and that's going to give you an octave harmonic um, against the written pitch. So you couldn't physically play both of those at the same time. Um, that is not, that is MP. Uh, 
here's uh, in the manuscript this says MP Soltasto a little bugbear of mine is writing the certain types of text in the wrong place Soltasto which means over the fingerboard um, is a technique and technique text should really go above the safe so that's what I'm going to do um, I suppose it should be like that Um, you can double stop some touch fourths, but they'd be so. Um, it wouldn't be an octave apart like that. It would be a fifth apart, and there'd be a bugger to tune. And there'd be a bugger to get to sound cleanly. Technical term. <laughs> Hopefully this is going to sound recognisable. That sounds uh, recognisable. So that, you know, espressivo um, is an expression text. So we do put that underneath with the dynamic. That's fine. Oh, Philip, come on. Thank you. like having live proofreading. reason I keep putting those accidentals in is there's no accidental on the um, thingy. Um, oh, okay, interesting. Oops. Um, there's no key signature on the Bill. Sorry, brain is trying to do too many things at once. Um, that's a very long key and note before I won't play it back like that. Never mind. Cellist doesn't have a dynamic. Cellist starts with a forte. Thank you. Called being German, Philip. <laughs> Sorry. 
being British makes you make comments like that. I can't help it. <coughs> could be worse. You could be French. Um. Let's just, uh, just dig that hole a bit deeper. true. It's not that we have a superiority complex or anything. We're just better than you. I don't mean that. I'm just saying it for effect. Um, right, okay. Uh, that is actually octave basso, so why not just write it in octave basso, eh? Why? It's not like you're struggling for space. Why would you write an octave basso line? Hmm? <laughs> I'm glad you used that term, taking the piss, because um, I wasn't aware that Americans know that. Oh, you're so, that's so true, Pete. Actually, they probably wouldn't point it out. They'd be too, too embarrassed on my behalf. Um, right, so we've got violin stuff in that. <coughs> Excuse me, that wasn't a, wasn't a sneeze. I've still got the blooming horrible cough. One of these days I'll shake it. Second violin is above the first. That's interesting. MF. No, it's not MF. It's a continuation of that. That's fine. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba.
Und jetzt joggen wir mal rein, okay? Set as well, I could see. Um, that's interesting. Oh, hello Henry. How do you make sure dynamics are a certain distance from the staves? I've got it set um, to default a distance of four. Not sure what the, the units are actually. Um, I can't remember. Um, but um, it means it's if I put the rulers on, you can see um, view objects and stuff. Yeah. So if I put in a dynamic here, you see it says it's four steps below. Um, and if I'm zoomed into a hundred percent, which I am now, that means um, that if I do um, two cursor presses that takes it up a qu quarter of a point four to a half obviously if you want to do full steps you can hold control and move um, so yeah I, I have things set so I can put them in at um, everything on the same plane and things like that it's pretty quick I don't Um, crescendo as a piece of text in Sibelius um, doesn't normally work unless you set it up in the playback dictionary but it wouldn't do much good because um, it doesn't show an extent you know crescendo for how long and to where um, so I haven't set it up to do anything, it won't read that on playback. So what I do is put in a hidden hairpin. So that will now crescendo. And then you've got the visible hairpin that's in the manuscript. And there'll probably be a landing dynamic over the page. If you want to adjust any of the any of the settings in Sibelius, um, it is quite possible. Um, let me just put that in there. 
um, under engraving rules, which is Control E or on appearance, there, engraving rules. You can change the default settings for anything here. Um, and then once you've got yourself a nice template, I'd recommend exporting that to a um, manuscript paper and you can then use that going forwards um, just by importing it. Um, so anything you set up there. You know. So when I'm working on a full you know, complete score like uh, Conan or something like that that I've just finished or Legends of the Fall that I'm working on right now I'll set up a, a template for that so that I know that every um, queue, which is a separate file, um, has exactly the same layout settings on it um, before I start making manual changes. Um, that. Um, <coughs> didn't realize I hadn't done that. No, that's okay. Should have two flutes on there as well. Probably need to adjust these in a minute. Okay, and then we've got Glock is still playing. Try to remember not to put all these accidentals in. We've got a heart with this again. This time we're going. feel like there's an accident missing there. Like that. Yep, that's okay. What are your experiences with MIDI keyboard inputting stuff like this? Um, way back in the day I used to input using the keyboard. Um, when I was at school, college and university, um, when I was doing it from home, initially I found I had horrendous latency that just I, I wasted so much time. The other thing is that um, anything with um, you know key weight velocity um, you actually kind of lose control over what you're putting in um, you know because here I'm using the QWERTY keyboard 
um, so everything is going in at exactly the same velocity um, and then I can manipulate it cleanly and accurately um, So I haven't actually used uh, a MIDI keyboard for a note input for yeah years. Um, when I'm not live streaming and rabbiting and trying to think about all sorts of other things at the same time, other than just putting notes in, um, you know, when I am doing that and focusing solely on note entry, I think I'm jolly quick and accurate so um, Oh, stop eating the Z. Um, mm -mm. <laughs> Space that out a bit. That's ghastly. Needs one on as well. Did you see that Joran Kane had? job opportunity yeah um, only if you live local to Culver City um, it wouldn't be for me anyway oh well, good luck if you do get that May. yeah an exciting place to work maybe you can um... <laughs> no I won't go there
I could tell from that that the mixer was all over the place. So I'm going to reset that. Note performer is balanced um, for a flat mixer automatically so that the um, instruments should sound balanced on playback. We'll adjust from there, but we want to start with a flat mixer at least if we can. All right, this is a two two bar page, which is interesting. D note. Uh, there are some great links. Do you already have? Yeah, I do have a preference. Gremlins I've done on the stream. Dances with Wolves I haven't. Dragonheart I haven't. Wild Wild West. I presume the Bernstein I haven't. Um, Gremlins I'm actually releasing the complete score at the end of this year. Um, got the manuscript for that already, so that's really good. Um, that's going to be fantastic as well. It's got um, six synths in it. All the synth stuff is written out. All the, the it's just everything is there. It's brilliant. Um, I've I had a request a few weeks ago to do um, Tara's theme from Gone with the Wind. So if over the past few weeks I've been trying to aim for that target uh, via my links and um, so this is step three out of four to get there um, next week we'll be doing 1933 Max Steiner King Kong um, and then that's a direct step then by composer to Gone with the Wind uh, after that um, I've had a request to do um, Bud on the Ledge from The Abyss, um, so I've found a route to that um, in another four steps, so um, I've got a good few weeks planned out, um, but there are, there are some really great scores coming up in the next few weeks, so it's going to be fun. But I do also like to see what potential links um, people are um, uh, think we could do from here um, and see what scores people might be interested in seeing. Um, I think I'm going to start taking like targeted requests and then we'll see what links we can find to get to those. Uh, that, I've had some fun with that in the last few weeks. We want a
on there. And we've got out show second trumpet line. Something a bit like that. Then we've got tambourine. time as I can. Right. Now optimize. Let's have a listen. Very sudden jump up to uh, forty, wasn't it? Did anything not build? Uh, I wonder why that didn't work then. It should have been a better build than that. Um, there was also a bit of a squiffy note here, I think. I think that 
that the core has been put in wrong. In the manuscript, let's have a look. Yeah. Yeah. It's written at concert pitch in the uh, manuscript on that page, which is amusing. That's a bit more like it. Um, do I think Watership Down will be published in full score? Well, I'll say never say never, um, but um, I would say it's probably unlikely, just given that um, the more obscure titles or you know smaller scores um, are less likely to be commercially viable speaking from experience of having published the Iron Giant um, so um, yeah it would take some careful planning to make that an, a title like that commercially viable um, which as I say makes it slightly less likely but not impossible. Um, but if you've got to weigh up between maybe doing, you know, Star Trek or something, and uh, Watership Down, um, and there's only one of you to do that work, that's the kind of decision making I have to make, unfortunately. Um, it's the sort of thing that maybe um, could be um, tested or you know the, the um, appetite for it tested using something like Kickstarter however um, that's not ideal for what we do really because everything is kind of front-loaded um, in that you have to secure a license um, find manuscript, check that manuscript is um, viable to actually work from, etc, um, etc, et all up front and pay for license, etc, etc. Um, you, yeah, you can't really do a Kickstarter until you've got stuff like that in place. So, <laughs> because you couldn't start taking people's money and then find out oh actually there's no manuscript or oh sorry the studio won't actually grant that license so it's a tricky one as I say it's not impossible Something like that. Pawn three is on. Trumpets. 
clock. from here because that will save me some time making stuff. Go seam to seam. <laughs> oh, um, go on then, Pete, post your steps, I want to see if you match up, well, you won't match up with mine if you've done it in three, um, where did I write that, where have I put it? My scrap of paper. Is this it? Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I go one, two, three, and then land on the abyss. <laughs> oh, don't worry, mine is pretty outside the box too. <coughs> Man, if you've got the same links, that'd be amazing. I've got a really nice idea for what to do after the abyss too, but um, that's dependent on... Um, uh, a favour being called in. <laughs> Oof. Read offer, not a good one. I haven't got that manuscript, but I know where it is. Friedhofer's handwriting is a nightmare. Um, I worked on um, some stuff for the adventures of Robin Hood and Hugo Friedhofer was one of the orchestrators on that and yeah his handwriting was atrocious um. Uh, 
Oh, no, actually, we want to do that. Um, Jared Mark, Deep Star Six. Well, I have no idea where that manuscript is. <laughs> okay, no, we don't match. <laughs> Minus slightly tenuous, but um, I'll tell you in a minute. Uh, I'll finish this page, then I need to. Uh, Take a quick comfort break, and then I'll, I'll um, I'll tell you. Hold that thought. I'll be back in two seconds. I'm back. So, um, let's have a listen to this. think that um, Schwarzando is a little bit severe. Um, hi Donny. Oh dear. Yeah, I don't know if um, you saw, but um, I did a, uh, a little tribute video for Vangelis, which I put out yesterday, I think. 
Um, well, we can show it on here maybe, later, maybe, but maybe not. Um, just have a look on my channel. Um, I did the theme from 1492, Conquest of Paradise. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. 79, no, it's not, not a bad innings. Um, so yeah, well, well, my links to get to the abyss from Gone with the Wind. So my tenuous links, well, not tenuous, but I always say in my intro that it could be a word in the title. Uh, see, let's see if you can get what my links are. Maybe if I tell you the first link is via the word wind. Let's see if you can get it now. <laughs> I will tell you. Some really good ones. I don't know if any of you have um, heard of or read uh, The Music of Bond by John Burlingame, um, but it's recommended reading. Um, and uh, as part of the sort of build up to doing this, um, I read the chap, reread the chapter on um, Diamonds Are Forever. And um, yeah, it's a fun read. <laughs> It's quite interesting hearing, um, hearing, reading um, about Don Black's choice of lyrics um, that didn't go down very well <laughs> with the producers to begin with.
Und to piano. Ooh, yeah. Well, you've got the first link. actually have anything from the hunt for a dot sober. Um, I'd love to have a look at that score because I know that a lot of um, time and budget saving was done um, on that score using synth as a necessity. Um, so I'd be interested to see you know what is notated on that. I love that film, it's like one of my favourite films and the score. But no, it's not Hunt for Red October. The Wind and the Lion is. Then it's a word link again. But it's the lion this time. And it's a very prominent actor's um, first movie, first motion picture, full length motion picture. This is fun. I do feel like I'm teasing them. <laughs> um, then that is the same as that. Except for that. Say natural. What was it doing that was not natural? Oh, right, so I'll test it. Okay. Okay. Natural. <laughs> yeah, and the director's cut. That would be good. Maybe when uh, Avatar comes out and destroys the box office, um, they'll do that. Um, 
it's not actually slowed. Slight differences in the phrasing for strings appears. Oh, cool. I think I had the Abyss soundtrack on cassette, I seem to remember. Um, Very Saraband, Verez Saraband um, uh, cassette. Right, now, hmm, this is going to be interesting. I've got a nice smear on my. Um, manuscript there, but I know. Excuse me a second. I've got it on here. Just going to check. See if it's legible on here. So meanwhile, let's do the base. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, what page are we on? Uh, six. Oh, that's hilarious. Jesus, you pay for this? <laughs> that's, they've got exactly the same manuscript on encoder. <laughs> In fact, it's even worse, even more badly obscured. <laughs> Hi Robin. Yeah. The Abyss um had that um water effect um that basically um signalled that they were able to do the T one thousand in uh Terminator two a couple of years later. That uh, morph Technology was uh, created for the abyss by industrial light and magic. Um, right, okay, bugger. Um, okay, I'm gonna make this up then. What do we do back here? Is it 
so obscured. No, missed that. Right. That should work now. Um, Okay, so no guesses then. The so we're going wind. We're going gone with the wind. The wind and the lion, which of course is Jerry Goldsmith. To the lion in winter, which is John Barry again. And it was um, Anthony Hopkins' first feature film. And Anthony Hopkins is the next link. So you've got one link via Anthony Hopkins between Lion in Winter and The Abyss. Can you get it? Another severe punch in the ear on that, unfortunately. Hopkins in Beowulf, Sylvester to the Abyss. Not bad, it's not that. It's one I looked at, but it's not that. Composer is John Williams. Espresso on that, no espresso on that. Don't be expressive, you guys. <laughs> uh, sounds... Jeff's got it. Ah, just ahead of you, Pete. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> then via Ed Harris, that's right. And then the week after that, it's going to depend whether I can get the manuscript in time, but uh, I'd like to do Enemy at the Gates. Um, but if I can't get that manuscript before then, then um, we'll do Apollo 13. Because we don't do enough for and on this channel. Um, and in fact, what we'll probably do if we do Apollo 13 is um, just, um, you know, I've already done the launch queue before, um, but do a formatting session on that. Because uh, that's like a ten and a half minute queue, well, slightly under ten and a half minutes, um, but an amazing queue. Plan, hopefully, and we the gates. Oh, do you mean after Apollo 13? <laughs> Might be horned out by then. But that's, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for an email back from Sarah about that. So, <coughs> well, um, I'm waiting for the approval on Apollo 13. Um, I put that application in a long time ago. It must be coming up for three years now. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm still waiting. I actually put the Apollo 13 license application in in time for me to finish it and have the book released in time for the 50th anniversary of the launch of that mission. And that was last April. <laughs> So, yeah, that didn't happen. Still, I haven't broken Tim's record yet at Omni Music Publishing. Um, he had to wait six years, I think, for How to Train Your Dragon. I enjoyed Shimmers, yeah. Um, I've got the manuscript for it, so I knew it, knew it reasonably well. Um, yeah, it's interesting. James's concert works are quite different, um, especially the earlier ones. I was really surprised to see that um, I got a, a thanks credit at the end of that. So I wasn't expecting that. Signatures. What did you think of it, Pete? Did you enjoy Spectral Shimmers? And the Forest Passage as well was uh, the other one. 
and um, what was the other one they did? Oh, the Flying Horseman. Um, there's a good music video for that if you haven't seen it on YouTube. Look that one up. With the aerobatic display team. stuff. Hmm. And ba -ba -ba like that. Hey, no, thank you. Ding.
Um, This again. Um, sorry. Um, in there. And that lands on the octopus. And then we are at the piano, aren't we? So I guess that would be on the same staff. But what the heck, I'm going to put it on here for now. Um, mm -hmm. Right. We're using both hands down below, should hide those rests. <laughs> oh, Simon, we got there. We got there. Um, we're going. So next week, King Kong, then Gone with the Wind, then the Wind and the Lion, then the Lion in Winter, then Nixon, and then the Abyss, and hopefully then Enemy at the Gates. If not. It'll be Apollo 13.
Let's put that. Okay, so we have a listen to everything. Um, I suppose we should do that on one staff to do it properly. So, um, yeah. Howdy, Darren. Nice to see you. To see you, nice. Right. Well, seeing as you've just arrived, let's have a full playthrough, shall we? That's the right one. Unless that becomes Obo two, and then I'll probably keep that as just um that. But anyway. reminders and all sorts but um, I'm not gonna put those in actually because I reformat it from being four bars per page um, once all the notes are in anyway so all those will be in the wrong place so let's just crack on shall we we've got ten minutes left
This all syncs up. Um, yep. Something a bit like that, I think. Still two and three.
it's like that. It's good, all good, all good, all good. Let's mine those up. That's a bit nice, I don't know. Piano is that's not that. And then we go. What? I mostly agree with you, Donny. Um, although I feel like the last, um, I don't know, the last few haven't really connected with me, score-wise or moving. Thank you. 
come on. Sorry, brain is getting tired. using a lot of Fultemeyer references. I've heard that Top Gun is amazing, so I'm really looking forward to seeing it. And we'll see about the score. Uh, right, that's really brought that up, so that should have been there. And that should be see what comes there. Right. Um, similar deal with the doodles. This, this is going to be the last page I'm going to do tonight. That's what it is, as that bit of the page is messed up. Um, That's a guess, because that's off the page. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see.
right then. That's going to be a horrible place to end when we come and play it, but uh, unfortunately I'm relatively limited to two hours. We've just overrun very slightly, so let's have a listen to what we've got and then I'll sign off. Let's give you as much page as we can. Oh dear me, there were some scrunchy notes in there um, <clears throat> on this page. I've got a feeling it's uh, what have we got? Let's see what's uh, clashing. It's definitely marked with a. Why would that be being natural? Oof, really? We've already discovered there are some suspect transpositions in here, so. Um, sure about that ain't natural but let's take one it's very clearly marked a natural and it is throughout Um, oh, come on, are you kidding me? So we've got a false relation there. There. Um, oh, okay. 
why is there not that bit of flat and not the one that's really there's some really <laughs> suspect stuff here right I'm going with a D flat there. Yeah, definitely. Um, fun this when you copy the manuscript and then you think yeah something sounds off you're into troubleshooting um that's for another time um well there we go um thank you very much for joining what i might do although it's a real tangent from um what we've been doing tonight in case you haven't seen it I think I might uh, sign off um, because we haven't got. Uh, well, I suppose we have. No, we haven't got exactly corresponding audio for this, obviously, because it's the um, Nick Rain arrangement. Um, or oh, have I? Hmm. Now, sorry, bear with. I was didn't think of this. Um, what's it called? I think that album's called Music of James Bond. Uh, da, 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 da. Very quick. Essential bond. Maybe I do have the audio for this. So let's do what we usually do and we'll export that. And I'll sign off with a live orchestra. So yeah, thank you very much for joining. Uh, next week will be Max Steiner's uh, King Kong score from 1933. And uh, I hope you'll join me then. Uh, but for now, have a good week. And uh, look out for posts because I, I will do another completed queue on Wednesday. And uh, if you are in the Patreon crew, um, there's going to be the Real 3 update for... Um, the Legends of the Fall. <laughs> My brain is fried. It's been a very long day. Um, yeah, real free update for Legends of the Fall, uh, which is a good one because that includes um, Twilight and Mist and the Ludlows, which is a fairly significant queue. Anyhow, thank you for joining, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.